one of my special babies. I don't leave home without it if I'm doing a ghost busting. <laughs> I already have my rose oil in there. I have to have that. Must have smudging fan. Uh, we use the um, Nag Champa incense, which I have in here. I also have some extra sage in here. Emergency sage. <laughs> when I set up my altar, the angel always goes with me. That's it. Now, I'm being instructed by my angels to bring a rose with me. Okay, I don't know why. I have no idea. But I was just told to take this purple rose and bring it. So we'll probably be putting it on our altar. It smells wonderful. High vibration and there might be a reason. Maybe one of the ghosts that we're going to be working with has an affinity to roses. Sometimes uh, Mother Mary uh, will come and you can get to smell roses and just the vibration of it will help us for whatever. I, you know, I trust my guides. If they say bring it, I'm going to bring it. I'll put that in. Okay, so I've got magic carpet. Oh, that's the orb. The orb one. Okay. Yeah, okay. okay. And then some Celtic music. Nasty minerals. Have you taken any? Yeah, you might Did you better. take enough? Probably not. Oh, they're so nasty. They're Mine so tastes nice. better than hers. Oh, mm. oh, pucker your mouth up. Oh, oh, take come them along. Come on, come oh, on. All right. More minerals. <laughs> <laughs> These are so bad. Oh. But the worse they are, the better they are. Mine, mine tastes good. <sighs> Come on, kids, we're gonna go play. See, they love look. to come on Ghostbusters. We need them, dragons. And look how cute those faces are. Aren't those the cutest gargoyles? I think they are. I think we got everything. I think I got it, Ronnie. All right. I think we have everything we need. No matter what we that face, okay. we're gonna have it. Okay. It first started as an accident something that I didn't know I had the gift to be able to do that. And once I realized that I had the ability to talk to people that were trapped, um, I got together with my partner, Laura Lee, and we did ghost busting together as a profession. I always was fascinated by, by witches, you know, and um, not really understanding what witchcraft was all about, that it's a very benevolent, um, nature-oriented, uh, philosophical practice. Um, I just liked the thought of stirring a pot. <laughs> By doing ghost busting and helping people and helping trapped souls, rescuing them from that in-between world, from their, their lost and suffering and then bringing them back to God, it's really an important thing. So, and the more we do it, um, and the more people that know about us, maybe we actually can make a living out of it. Hi. Hi. Yes. You Lacey? Yes, I'm Lacey. Hi. Hi. I'm Come on, Maddie. We're yeah, the we're Ghostbusters. Okay, I think what we're going to start out uh, doing at first is some. Um, filling out a questionnaire. So let's start with, um, I can get all the other particulars mm -hmm. uh, later. So they're, do they have Aaron too? Well, I had a boyfriend living here at the time too. Yeah. And, he, and he got kind of freaked out, huh? I walked in here and I was, I, I get feelings, I don't yeah. know, sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, and you can feel really eerie stuff. Yeah? It was eerie, it uh -huh. was weird. Now has anybody ever um, been, gotten sick from this kind of energy or, um, experience any kind of pains? It's pretty much like that or the head rush that rushes further, <laughs> you know. And these activities or these creepy feelings, um, in your bedroom is one place where the cat was freaking mm -hmm. out, right? So, and then you said right in this hall, mm -hmm. okay, ghosts and spirits and things like that, um, they're electromagnetic and they can... They can manipulate. Yeah. They can do lights and they can do um, the stereo. Oh, yes. Yes. My stereo. Mm -hmm. We had that. Mm -hmm. That was the first one that Definitely. really was like, all right, something's, something's trying to get our attention. So not too much scare, fear. It's yeah. just something's happening. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, it's happening. Well, well, 
Yeah, I kind of wonder after you just said that. He he was having a really hard time, remember? That weekend, he didn't like what was going on. Like, he wasn't very happy with himself, and my parents were here, and he was really ashamed he didn't want to be around my parents. Mm -hmm. And that's why he was here and not with us. So have you yeah. noticed with him a major personality shift? Oh, very. Yeah. Complete 180. Complete 180. We were together for 18 months, and then all of a sudden, he just broke up with me. Like, it was really all of a sudden, both of us, like, everybody. And he moved out. I have to ask one real important question. Hopefully you know the answer to this. Did he um, have any period of unconsciousness that you know of where he either was in a car accident, might have hit his head, fell, might have hit his head, some kind of operation, maybe dentist where they put him out? Um, the closest thing I could think of is if he had a few drinks and he went to sleep. Dude, should we try to call him? Call him. Do you want to know? You can call them and ask him. Well, I was going to have you come up here and talk to them with us. Would that be better to do? Would that be all right? Yeah. Or it's fine with us if he's willing to come. Mm. Well, because it would really help. He knows we're doing this? Uh, just because I think of, so. I, like, you're the, you're the only other person that really experienced any of it. And, okay. Um, well, if we think of anything, again, we'll call you. <laughs> All right, dude, thanks. But, oh, it's all right, man. <laughs> it's very possible that he has what we call um, a shove-in. What that means is while he was in some kind of an unconscious state or vulnerable state, this entity mm -hmm. possibly that was in here shoved into him and left with him. And when did the personality shift begin? Because that's when you would want to look at when yeah. you were in it. Well, uh, what caused the breakup? I mean, you said he was just two of them. He just all of a sudden like changed. Just uh, and how long ago was that? Because he just oh when was that? It's like a month before you broke up. About there. Month. All summer he would, had started acting weird though. Like remember he didn't like it when people were coming over and he didn't. Mhm. Mm yeah. Yeah, he didn't. Uh, yeah, he didn't want to, he didn't want people to be over here, and he just was, he'd get mad at me because I wanted to be around people. Yeah. That sounds like a shoving. That's totally. We yeah. just have to try to figure out, um, because they're, you know, it's, it's usually the person has to be either unconscious or in such a drunken state where they're just like practically passed out from it. Man. So that's possible. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and check this place Good. out to see if anything is still there. Okay. So what we're going to do is go into a deep meditation. But the most important thing is we're going to see if that entity in the closet is still there and check to see if Aaron really did take the soul that was inhabiting this place with him. So that's what we're going to be doing. boy in the closet, okay, his name is Elijah, he was a farm boy, must have been a farm around here at some point in time. Like in the 30s or something, it was that yeah, out there. Yeah, before these, this place was even built. And he was kicked in the head by a horse, and he showed me the vision, the horse kicked him, and, and he died almost instantly, but his spirit just popped right out. I've never seen anything like that. And got stuck because he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. But the times when the cat was messing with the closet, you know, it's, it it's because he was there hiding. He just hides. He sits, he like lays down it's on really the floor. Sad. And yeah, it's just sad. like that. It's really sad. He's scared and he doesn't know what's he doesn't going know where on. Go. And then the last thing is there was an entity.
entity in this house named Jonathan. He did not die in this apartment, but he lived in this apartment. Sometime in the 70s, give or take, you know, kind of looked like that era. And he was a student, probably about 19, 18 years old, very depressed, uh, very into denying who he was and trying to escape. Um, very hard upbringing, parents that were way too hard on him, uh, put way too many demands on him. He could never meet his parents' expectations, ever. Mm -hmm. So I mean, he became straight A's wouldn't be enough. even good enough. Yeah. There was always something. Very low self-esteem, very depressive, wound up uh, ODing on drugs. He did shove in to Aaron, and it's why Aaron's personality shifted so dramatically, and it's why Aaron is getting so much more depressed now. It's why he's having thoughts of suicide. It's why he can't do anything good enough. He doesn't want to be around people because he just feels like Anyone he's that unworthy. Anyone he thinks would judge him is he just can't As soon as you said that, that, it brought tears to my eyes because it was everything that I had noticed about Aaron. It's so sad. Yeah, but the good thing is we can make them both happy. Yeah, <laughs> we can send Jonathan on, give you back Aaron as, as a friend, as, as a person who can have his life back again. So what we're going to do is um, start out by setting up our altars, what we call our altars, our sacred things. And Lorley's going to put one in here, and I'm going to put one in the bedroom, okay? We get that all set up. That's our power place. Okay, we're going to go ahead and bring some angels in first okay. to get started. Um, I'm going to bring Yeshua. Ben Joseph. He's confused a little bit, but he knows something exciting is happening. Okay. Well, this is a first. Um, I'm sensing that Mother Mary is going to come down and into this vortex and help bring him through to the other side. At this time, I see Elijah and Mary making contact. He recognizes who she is. And she's bringing with her the smell of roses, which I think mm -hmm. is why this rose needed to be here. How interesting. She is so cute. happy, I know. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> For the first time in a very long time, um, in years upon years upon years, this child is smiling. This child is finally going home. Okay. It's done. Okay. It's done. Okay. So, Elijah, little boy, maybe around 10, is now home where he belongs. Very happy. Um, makes us feel really good. Song or just the uh, Just the whole yeah. thing. Just okay. Do you have a picture of Aaron at all? Sometimes that, it, we don't necessarily have to have it, but it sometimes helps us. Will that work? Yeah. Oh my god. Major, look, look at that. Oh, he okay. is such an indigo. And so sensitive. He is so sensitive. <laughs> That's why it's just driving him. What we'll do is put Aaron in an egg, yeah, and then bring it through. I'm seeing it come right, right in the egg in front of him, so that they can both have visual confirmation of that. Mm -hmm. So and it'll be quite big. It'll be quite a big egg. Okay. Um, so let me go, yeah, go ahead and get the egg now. going. He's looking at them and he's looking back at Aaron. He's looking at them and he's looking back at Aaron. It's cool. I know, it's interesting, isn't it? He's really sorry. 
You know, he's apologizing to you too, Lacey. Because a lot of Aaron's behavior, his negative bad behavior, was caused by Jonathan. And he feels he needs to apologize to you before he can go on. for forgiveness from you from how he's treated you because he's been very mean to you well and also there's gratitude for not just totally alienating you because he's thinking that's what he deserved for the way he treated you and you're still very kind to him and that was real um He's very grateful for that because you were one of the few links that he had to, well, actually you were the link to helping him get free. And Sarah. Both of you, yes. It's a very much a collaborative effort. He really didn't know who else to talk to. So if you can forgive him, Lacey, for things that he said, the mean things that he said. And they totally weren't him and he just totally acknowledges them. He's so sorry. And so the angels want to actually thank you, both of you girls, and and his spirit guys. He's got some really um high up spirit guides that want to thank you too because if it weren't for you he wouldn't have, It'd have been it would have been a long time but yeah. I mean it could have been a long, long time you know as dramatic as it might sound we might have saved someone's life tonight just just in the act of removing this and then squatter been. This, this entity that, that took over plus we got Elijah yeah, to go back home. Okay. Uh, we're done. When you have the understanding that the souls that you're working with are also an aspect of God, just like you are, it makes it so much easier to do this kind of work, to go through the pain and go through the suffering and go through all the things that we go through to help people.